Hello, today we're going to be creating a really, really cool dictionary program. And in this program, we're going to be using the module Pi Dictionary to help us. We're going to be merging it with a thesaurus, and it's going to be really, really cool. So if you want to see how to make this, then let's check it out. To get started with this program, we're going to want to open up the terminal in your IDE. If your IDE does not have a built-in terminal already, then you're going to want to go to your command prompt if you're on a Windows and your terminal if you're on a Mac. Now what you want to do is you want to head over here and you want to write pip install pi dictionary. So now you want to wait a little bit and let pi dictionary install inside your program. So I'm going to pause the pro I'm going to pause the video right here and come back once it's done. I suggest you guys do the same. Okay, so once your installation is finished, then you're just going to exit out of the uh, terminal and you're going to want to import pi dictionary into your program. The way we can do this is we can just write from high or high dictionary import high dictionary. And that's all we have to do. And we can actually get high dictionary to start working inside our program. Now, all we want to do is we want to assign high dictionary's traits to a value uh, to a variable so that we can access all of its functions. So the way we can do this is we can just write dictionary. That's the, what I'm going to be naming my function. So dictionary equals high dictionary. And we can just put parentheses or sorry. And then we can just put parentheses. So once that's done, all we have to do is we have to actually ask them what their value is. So what, the, what they want to do, whether they want to get a synonym, an antonym, or a uh, meaning. So the way we can do this is by making a new variable of choice, and we can say int input. And the reason we're doing int input is because we only want to get an integer value or a number value. The reason we want to do this is because we want to, we want to ask them, like, press one for this option, two for this option, and three for this option. I've always found this to be a much better option than just telling them to type it because after that, there's a bunch of mistakes sometimes, spelling errors, capitalization, and you have to have a lot of checks and balances. So it's much easier to just say, uh, what would you like, you like, and then we can write meaning, and then we could put in parentheses one, and then we could say synonyms, oh, synonyms. I think I'm spelling that wrong. So synonyms, and then you could say two, and you could say antonyms, and all you have to do is three. Okay, so once that, oh, not two, three. Okay, so once that's done, you should have this line of code. And now we're gonna ask them what their actual word is, like what they wanna find the uh, meaning, antonym, synonym of. So we're just gonna make a new variable, word, equals input, right? We just want an input now. And we're going to say, enter your word. And we're going to press colon. And now that reminds me, we should probably have a colon here in space, just to give them a little breathing room. Okay. Once that's done, we actually want to put this in a while loop. Uh, so we're going to, uh, we're going to keep asking them forever and ever until they choose to quit. The reason that I like to do this is because it's, uh, the reason I like to do this is because they don't have to keep running the program. So what we can do is we can make a new variable called x and x equals one. And we can say while x equals equals one, we can put that here. So now inside our while loop, we can actually uh, check what choice they made and we're gonna actually act upon that. So we can say if choice equals equals one, then we can, uh, then we can say print, oh, print, dictionary dictionary dot meaning and now we can put the word and just like that we can do the same thing for uh antonyms and synonyms so we're going to say elif so if the first option isn't true but this one is and choice equals equals two then we can say print dictionary dot now we want to find a synonym so dot synonym and now we want to write the word okay and just like that we can do you guessed it, elif choice equals three. So elif choice equals equals three. And we can print dictionary dot antonym. And just like that, we can put the word in. 
So now we have all of these, but what if they enter four or zero or negative one? We also wanna check that we're gonna say else. So if none of these options are true and they didn't enter a valid option, we're just gonna print, please enter a valid option, okay? And something that I like when uh, doing when doing a while loop is adding just one print statement just for space because I don't like the text to be like all um, all together. So I just like to put like a space, just a line of space. Okay. So once that's done, we should be pretty good to go. Except there's one problem. It will keep on running, and we want to ask them whether we want to exit the program or not. So we can make a new variable. Continue one and we can put and get an input and we can say enter stop to stop the program enter anything else to continue and now what we can do is just in case they put in like stop and lowercase we can just say continue one uh dot lower okay so that's uh something that i like so what we can do is we can check, we can say if continue one but lower equals equals stop, then you can actually, uh, then what we can do is we can say X equals one, uh, two, right? Just like that. So then when it checks the while loop, X won't equal one. So the while loop will stop. And when, and then we're basically done. So let's get a test. We can run this program and let's see if it worked. It's gonna take some time to load. So uh, that's the thing, I'm in PyCharm, so it's a little heavy editor. So now it's gonna ask me whether I want the meaning, synonyms, or antonyms. I'm gonna say one for meaning. I'm gonna enter my word and I'm gonna say my, because uh, it's the first thing that came into my mind. Okay, the following error occurred, index out of range. Let's try this again. So we're gonna just press E, and let's say one, and let's say hello. Okay, so when I said mine, I think that they couldn't find the Pi Dictionary, which couldn't find an actual meaning, but the program does work. But uh, okay, but let's try a synonym. So if we just do this, and let's try a synonym, and we can say Python, and I'm talking about the snake, and now it's gonna tell me, a boa, snake, rock snake, and it's just gonna say a bunch of things. And now let's try stop. And it will stop the program. Now, a little thing that I noticed, this is a really small thing, but you might wanna add a colon and a space. This is just gonna be better, but the program does work. So that's pretty nice. And you learned a cool program today called Pi Dictionary. And I think it's a really nice module. And I think you guys created a pretty cool program. So share this with your friends and family because you've created a much better dictionary than the big old book one because now you can just search for words. So that's what I like about it. Thank you guys. And I'm going to be leaving now. So bye guys. 